beautiful. I felt like a kid with my whole life ahead of me. So that was written by a woman um, who swam in the swim race. At the time, she was a graduate student at the School of International Relations at University of California, San Diego, uh, but a proud um, native of Massachusetts. And she says she adores everything that is water related and dreams of having a job that requires her to chase pirates on jet skis, then maybe write about it. So this woman obviously has a wonderful fantasy life and is a great writer and a great swimmer because 36 minutes is a pretty good time for a mile uh, when there are waves and winds and a lot of other swimmers. Uh, there will be again a swim race coming up. Um, so if you're interested in starting to train or to sign up because they normally fill up very quickly. Last year we had 150 people with some on that waiting list. So go to Charles River Swimming Club and find out how you can qualify and how you also can then get a bumper sticker that says swim in the Charles. So swimming in the Charles is something that the Charles River Conservancy has been working on for um, 11 years. Uh, in fact, it was one of the reasons I started the Conservancy because I love to swim in rivers and growing up I swam in rivers in Switzerland. And working together with CRWA, the DCR, um, MRWA, the Department of Public Health, the EPA, the DEP, um, all these groups uh, work together to make the water cleaner, to test it and to find a safe way for everybody to enjoy the river. So let's go uh, further up the river um, and look at some more images and then have some more stories. We're now coming by um, the lagoon and um, soon uh, we will be at the Harvard Bridge. Well, we are too far now. Um, we will soon reach the Harvard Bridge or the Mass Avenue Bridge. And I have a uh, a poem um, about that bridge and it was a poem that was um, written for state representative Marty Walls um, because she spoke at the celebration um, of a celebration at MIT and it was the 50th anniversary of the Smoots. And if you don't know what the smooth is, listen to the poem and you might find out more. It's a poem, it's called The Lost Smooth Verses from the Engineer's Drinking Song by Joseph LaRousseau. A boy quite fair named Ollie Smoot was laid out end to end to measure out by meets and bounds a bridge without a bend. Halfway to hell did Ollie tire and cried out, I'm through. Alas, that I'm but five feet seven and not eleven feet two. It grieves us so, his brother said. You feel you're such a runt. Your frame we find defines the mean. You're perfect for this stunt. Why, you ask, try Ollie so. They'd demolished 40 beers because, because they were, they were, they were all engineers. 364.4 was not enough to span the bridge that ends at MIT according to God's plan. Fell short, you say? Alack, alas, indeed you need not fear. Mark Antony all, his brother cried, Ollie, lend us your ear. And now this tale is over and you are free to go, but carry with you from this day the fact that you now know that Ollie Smooth has left a mark that shall remain quite clear for generations yet to come and not just engine years. So this poem um, was read by Representative Marty Walls who represents 
both the Back Bay and parts of Cambridge. And she is a regular walker along the river and across the bridges and has been an amazing advocate for swimming and for a new parkland and parkway spill as well as for underpasses to improve the connectivity along the river. So she was asked um, to speak at this celebration and next time you walk along um, the river and then across the Harvard Bridge or the Mass Avenue Bridge, which is the same, have a look for the signs of the smooths. And the funny thing is Ollie, um, Ollie Smoot, um, after he graduated from MIT, then became an engineer um, and devoted his life to measurements. So this was a, a very dramatic beginning to his life as a measuring expert. So we're going up the river and um, come to the Weeks Bridge. The Weeks Bridge um, is the subject of a story, a very um, charming and romantic story um, by a woman called Deborah Isles. She arrives from Newton every morning and parks near the stadium and then she walks um, across the river. Um, she doesn't walk over the Weeks Bridge, she walks over the Anderson Bridge to her work at the Kennedy School. But she sees the Weeks Bridge and she wrote a story about it. The story is called River Walls. The moon shimmered on the water and made the tall grasses along the banks glow like sabers. Gentle breezes rustled the cattails and danced with the Mozart walls tinkling from a tape deck under a tree. Tables and chairs were scattered about on the grass and young people drifted among them. It was springtime, 1983, a soft May evening, just a few weeks before commencement. A classmate in Dunster House had been inspired to host walls on the Weeks Bridge. I felt lucky to be among the guests. At the time, my musical taste veered more towards the pretenders and the psychedelic furs. But what girl, no matter how punk, could resist the idea of waltzing on the footbridge, seeking some poetry and grace as we approached our final college days, already feeling the creeping nostalgia what matter that we did not know how to waltz, or that the bridge is an incline, or that the traffic must continue on Memorial Drive? What matter indeed? I pulled a champagne-colored party dress out of a heap in our dorm room. One of my roommates had arrived at Harvard with a giant carton of such dresses, worn by her glamorous mother during the Johnson administration. With rhinestones, lipstick, and hairspray, I was transformed, worthy of waltzing in moonlight. My future husband was with me that night, dashing in his Kieser's tuxedo. It all deemed, it, we all danced and sipped wine, clustered together in our finery, staying in range of the music and the twinkling lights. We leaned on the rough balusters, of the bridge and gazed at the lights in the Welt boathouse. There was an amazing stillness to the evening, as if someone had pressed the pause button on our busy future lives and asked us simply to be there, in that place, with those friends, for just a few moments. It was a night that stands apart from other memories of that time, like a polished gem among pebbles. So that's the story uh, written by Deborah Isles. And um, the Weeks Bridge often has Harvard students dancing on it. On May 1st, Harvard students um, in black tie and long gowns they dance and then as the morning starts and as the revelers of the May dance gather on the Cambridge side, 
near the Weeks Bridge, they come over the bridge and the two reveling groups greet each other, they shake hands and we wish each other a happy May Day. And also the Weeks Bridge is used um, for waltzing, um, no not waltzing, um, of tangoing during full moon. So look on the website of the Charles River Conservancy to find um, the information about the dancing on the full moon. Well, we're coming um, soon to the end of the show and in case you um, want to learn more about other programs of the Conservancy, um, you find those on the website um, about the Sunday games, which are in the summer. Um, under those trees, under the shade of those trees is yoga, again will be on, the, on Sunday afternoons starting in the summer. And uh, here is the, the, the Weeks Bridge looking at the Weld Boathouse that was described in Deborah's story. Um, our volunteers, and we had 2,700 this year, planted another 10,000 bulbs and in the spring the daffodils will all come up. Going up the river, um, although we are still in the middle of the city, it gets very um, poetic up here with the boathouses and the boathouse with the rowing going on with all the flags. A lovely bridge, the Elliot Bridge, named after Charles Elliot, the landscape architect and his father, the Harvard president, with the golden glow underneath. And here is the wonderful river, um, again rendered in watercolor. So you find those images on the website, um, but before we get to the website, I want to thank the people who helped us put the, that publication together um, and who help us as we do the work along the, the Charles River Conservancy. And if you um, are interested in receiving a copy either of the 2007 River Stories um, or of the River Stories um, that we published in 2010, go to the website where you can see the full copies and I hope you'll come and visit our website and also that um, you will um, watch our YouTubes with previous shows along the Charles River. And thank you for watching and come again to the show.